Hello and welcome to Adventurous Way. I'm Diana. And I'm Matt. And today we're going to give you some updates on the RV situation. If you've been following our recent videos, you'll have seen what's happened there. And also some tips for how to use a storage unit as an RVer. So first, um, if you didn't catch our previous videos, we discovered mold in our roof cavity about um, three weeks ago. And since then we've been staying in a hotel so that we are not uh, in the RV. Um, the situation since the previous video hasn't really changed much. Uh, we had sent out the mold test kit. Um, the lab has received it, but we haven't gotten the results back from it. We've been in the hotel, like to say, three weeks. Uh, we've got another week to go uh, until we uh, head over to Oregon, which is where we're going to get the RV roof replaced by Outdoors RV, the manufacturer of our trailer. The last week, though, has been a pretty good week. We've got quite a lot done. Yeah, so one of the things that we are doing, we found a storage unit and we'll be putting uh, a lot of our stuff in the storage while uh, we go on the trip to Oregon and back. Yeah, so right now the RV is in the RV park still and it is almost completely empty. It's all still kind of bedded in. It's got the skirting on, the hoses and the electrical uh, are all hooked up. Uh, but like I said, there's almost nothing inside the RV. We've done that because we wanted to get our possessions out of a potentially moldy environment. Although we haven't seen mold inside the living area, it's only been in the ceiling that we can see. We don't know that the mold spores haven't escaped, especially as we removed that shroud and, and saw the mold. So for us, it's really a case of get things out and get them safe. So most things we brought here directly to the hotel room. So it was, it was carnage, wasn't it, in the hotel room? Yeah. It was just boxes and bags and just, we just piled things into the truck and brought them here. So over the last week, we have been sorting those things out to go into a storage unit. Now, we already have a storage unit down in Texas. That's one that we got when we uh, moved out of our house or our apartment and uh, into the RV. That is a climate controlled storage unit in Texas, which normally is a good thing to, to prevent the heat and the humidity. Although hopefully with the recent cold spell down in Texas, it's also been kept a little bit warmer than, than the outside temperature as well. If you're gonna use a storage unit as an RVer, here are some things that you might wanna think about, and at least the approach that we took, I guess, on how to make best use of that. Yeah, and uh, I guess the first decision you'll have to make, are you going to put some stuff in storage or not? For some of you, you may have family or friends where you can leave some of your stuff, especially if it's not much. But for us, we don't have any family in the United States, so we decided to get a storage unit. Um, partially also because we knew we would not RV forever, and there's some stuff that we want to keep for later when we live in the house. So this situation now, by moving into the RV, it kind of reminded us um, how we went through the process the first time when we uh, put stuff in the storage. And that really was a process. We were living in a four bedroom, 1900 square foot house. We knew that the ARV was in our future, but the timing wasn't quite right to start just then. So we ended up moving into a one bedroom apartment at the end of our house lease for a couple of months, was it maybe? Yeah. Uh, and that actually, in hindsight, turned out to be a blessing in disguise. It was a pain having to, to move twice, essentially. But downsizing from the house to the apartment was a really good kind of like first cleanse. Yeah. And I mean, we had everything in there. We had like ATVs, I had a woodworking shop in the garage. We had, it was fully furnished with all our own stuff inside. So it really was like pretty hard to downsize, but we were ruthless. Uh, although we knew that the RVing wasn't going to be something we did forever. We also didn't want to pay for a giant storage unit to load furniture in and, and those sorts of things. Especially things that, uh may get ruined for example like textiles on sofas and things like yeah. that yeah so we we basically had a, a pretty simple rule as we did this downsizing if it was from ikea it was not going to get stored uh we uh sold most of that stuff on facebook marketplace and craigslist and things like that uh it's just not worth storing things that are that big and bulky and are relatively inexpensive to buy again if you need to in the future Plus, things might change. We don't know what type of house or apartment or whatever we may end up in in the future. So first step in this is cleanse. Downsize and get rid of anything that you don't really, really need to store. And then once you figure out what the things you want to store, here are some tips of uh, how to organize it. So one is uh, write down on the boxes, what's inside the boxes, and write down numbers on the boxes to have a complete inventory. And then actually what also we did, what we found very helpful is to create a, a Google document that's shared between us and uh, lives on the cloud where we can put the number 
boxes and you can write out more detailed contents uh, of the boxes in that Google document. Maybe it's just me, but when I'm packing boxes full of stuff, I know what's going in them. And within like seconds after sealing it up, I'm like, did I, did I put that thing in there? I, you just can't remember. So writing down really in a lot of detail exactly what's in there. Have you included remote controls and batteries, or not batteries, but power cables and things in there. Get all of that down in that same doc. And also grouping things together yes. so that you've got like all your electronics in one place or, or all your kitchen tableware in one place uh, makes a, a, a huge difference. That's actually a document that we've referred back to several times uh, since we put it in storage two and a half years ago and say like, hey, do, do we have such and such a thing in storage? And we went back to that storage unit, was it a little over a year ago? Yeah. Uh, end of 2019. And we dropped some more stuff off, but we also picked up a few things. Uh, we had our um, squash rackets and things that we decided we wanted to have on the road uh, just in case we found ourselves in an area such as New England that would have squash courts and things. We didn't factor in the fact they'd all be closed because of COVID. Yes, um, <laughs> that didn't help. That was long before COVID hit. But, uh, but yeah, so having that really detailed inventory is really useful. So we've been following a lot of these same approaches this time, but on, on like a more trimmed down scale. So we want to make sure our stuff is safe and secure. There are three big reasons that we are storing our possessions in a storage unit rather than keeping them in the trailer. The first is, as I mentioned before, we don't know if there is mold already in the trailer. We don't, we don't see any evidence of it inside the living area, but that's by no means a guarantee that it's yeah. all, all, all free of mold. Also, when the, the work on the trailer is done, that could disturb the mold spores uh, as well. So we just don't want our stuff in there. Second, when the work is being done on the trailer, we want that environment to be as empty as possible for them. We, we don't want them having to like climb over our possessions and move our stuff out of the way. And then last, but still pretty significantly, there's a lot of weight in all of those possessions. Mm. And when we're doing a five and a half thousand mile journey uh, to Oregon and back, keeping the weight down will actually make a measurable difference on the fuel economy uh, on that route. So we don't need the stuff in there. It, we're not going to be sleeping in the trailer on that trip. We're going to be in hotels, uh, certainly for the way out, yes. because we can't sleep in the trailer. And on the way back, we think we might probably do hotels as well, just to keep things simple at the end of long days of driving, not having to worry about leveling the trailer and, and we therefore don't need all that stuff for the way back either. Yeah. So having these two storage units uh, is, is really useful for this trip. Actually, you said two, so why two? Yeah, so we've decided to get these two units. One is climate controlled. Uh, we obviously have things in the trailer that need to be climate controlled, everything from textiles to electronics and things like that, that we just don't want to expose to the freezing outside temperatures. And humidity, as we've learned recently, <laughs> is so important. So we have a climate controlled unit where most of our stuff is going to go. We also then have a smaller uh, non-climate control, just a, a standard storage unit. And that's where we're going to store some things that are just bulky and maybe already wet or dirty. Uh, so some of the things that are underneath the uh, RV at the moment, like our portable solar panel is under there. Uh, we've got the uh, solar panels on the roof. We haven't yet decided whether we're gonna remove them before the journey or not. Originally, we were thinking of taking the six solar panels on the roof off the RV before we leave Vermont, putting those into storage, because they've got to come off to, to replace the roof, and we don't need to remove the brackets. We can just remove the panels mm -hmm. from the brackets, so no changes to the roof there. But, you know, I don't know that I really want to climb up on the roof in freezing conditions and try and undo dozens of tiny little bolts uh, in the snow and on a snowy roof and things. It just doesn't sound much fun, to be honest. And, and it's gonna be a pretty nasty job to do. So we're sort of debating, do we do that or do we just leave them on until we get there and hopefully inside the, the factory it'll be a lot easier to remove them. It doesn't take long to, to yeah. remove them. And the time scales of two units is, so the first one, the climate control one, as soon as we get back, we will put the stuff back in the RV and we're not gonna keep that unit. But the not climate controlled one, we uh, probably will keep it for a little bit longer because uh, we're gonna be around the uh, Vermont, New England area for a while while we're looking for land. I did mention the solar panels coming off the roof. We don't yet know when we're gonna put them back on or maybe even if we'll do something different to what we did before. So we have 600 watts on the roof and it's been fantastic. Like we've, we've really enjoyed having that capacity on the roof. But around here, there just isn't that much dry camping. 
And so it's likely that wherever we go with the RV, we're probably going to have hookups, which means that the solar panels really aren't doing anything. If we do go on shorter drives or shorter like trips away, we've still got the 200 watt portable panel that we can plug in. Plus with our Red Arc DC to DC charger on the truck, we have 600 watts going into the trailer whenever we're driving. We don't really know exactly what we're gonna do in terms of re-adding solar to the trailer, but at least until we work that out, we can store the solar panels in the, in the storage unit. Also for the winter, we acquired more stuff to prepare for the winter, like um, you know the dehumidifier and also the um, hoses. Those heated hoses, they are quite bulky and they, we didn't really have space for them beforehand, so we definitely don't have <laughs> space for them now. Yeah, we, we sort of, we knew that we were looking to stay around this area after winter. So we sort of, normally we try and avoid buying more stuff because we've got to carry it with us on the road. But because we sort of knew we were going to stick around here, that's why we splurged on the hoses and, and we knew we'd have a space to store them uh, somewhere around here. And also staying here over the winter was kind of a test to see whether we like it. And so far we love it. We really like the snow and we like skiing and we really see ourselves that uh, we could live uh, in this area. So the last thing to mention on the storage units is obviously as you start looking at that you need to make sure that you have secured it properly. Now the storage facilities do sell locks, uh, they're the, kind of the discus lock types that we found at, at these storage units, um, but I, I kind of wanted to see if I could find something a little bit more secure. So that sent me down the research rabbit hole of locks uh, in the last week or so and I found a lock that I think is pretty secure. It's made by Abus. It is still a discus lock and from the outside it looks identical to uh, the locks that they do sell. So we felt it was important not to make the lock look too conspicuously expensive and, and strong because that just makes people question what have you got in the storage unit that's so valuable that you needed this crazy lock. We've gone with this Abus lock. Um, we've got a blog post about why and how we chose that and we'll leave a link to that in the description below. But this lock, uh, I think we paid about $50 for it and it is uh, a pretty good lock by all accounts. It's been well reviewed uh, by people who know much more about locks than I do. Uh, they think it's a good lock and hopefully we'll keep all of our possessions secure. So, and you also learned some uh, tips on how to lock the storage unit. Yeah, it's not just about the lock you use, but it's about how you put that on the door. So uh, we've got more about this in the blog post, but a couple of things to think about are if it has a, a latch, like a sliding latch like ours does, quite often there'll be two holes in there it's generally recommended to put the lock through the hole closest to the outside with the lock mechanism where the key would go in facing the outside because usually there's a pillar or a wall or a boundary of some form there, which means if someone did want to get a tool in there to try and pick it or break it, they've got a lot less room to work in against that side. So we've been doing all of this research. Like I say, it's all in the blog post. So we've shared all of that, and if that can help you in securing your things in a storage unit, then that's fantastic. While we've been here in the hotel, we've also been really trying to ramp up the uh, progress on our search for property. If you've been following us for a while, you'll know that we're trying to find some land to buy and build a house on. We're gonna be leaving the state next week, and we'll be gone for probably a couple of weeks if all, all goes to plan. And then we'll have to quarantine on return, which is a big chunk of time taken out that we obviously won't be able to go and visit properties. So we have been using this time to, to do as much as we can to progress that, but we'll share more about that in an upcoming video. On our last couple of videos, we also had a couple of comments from people recommending we look at mold foggers and air scrubbers and all these sorts of things to make sure that the, uh, the trailer is completely free of mold once that roof has been replaced. So we've been in contact with a company called Biocide Labs and we've worked with them to pull together a kit that includes a mold fogger it includes a spray that we can use to spray down any exposed surfaces, and then also a, uh, an air scrubber, uh, a small portable air scrubber. It's a small space. We don't need a giant unit to go can in there. Can you explain what air scrubber is? Yeah, so this is a fascinating... I, I was like, what, what is an air scrubber? Like a pressure hose for air or something? I, I genuinely had never heard of this term. It's essentially just a, uh, a, an air filter, uh, but a very uh, high quality air filter designed to remove very, very small particles from the air. Uh, this is something that we've actually considered getting something along these lines in the past. We found ourselves near the wildfires in mm -hmm. Washington last year and having some kind of air filter there could have been useful. So we've decided to, to purchase this air filter, this air scrubber, and hopefully using that in conjunction with the, the mold fogger, with the spray, 
Uh, that should ensure that our trailer is completely free of mold. These products are all designed for use in RVs and vehicles and homes and things. They are safe to be uh, to be used around. They generally say you've got to leave it a few hours before you can go back in there. But I think what we'll do is once the roof has been replaced, we can leave the trailer sealed up for probably a few days on the way back mm -hmm. across. So um, so that, that'll be ready for us to move into. It'll be all clean and things when we get back to, to Vermont. So thank you for those suggestions in the comments. We are leaving next week. It's crazy how fast time flies and there's still a couple things that we will need to do. Yeah, so the trailer has basically not moved for, what, like four, three, four months. Um, so I'm a little bit nervous actually about moving it for the first time. There are various things we need to do, obviously, like remove the skirting, disconnect the hoses and all the, the electrical. Um, I've got to uh, reconnect our propane tanks uh, because it's currently connected to the 100 gallon propane tank. So I need to switch that back across as well. We're plugged into the cable Wi-Fi, so we need to, uh, the cable internet, sorry. So we need to disconnect that uh, and, and get the cellular one working again. So there's lots of these little jobs that we've got to do. Then once we've got the trailer kind of clear, we still need to do a load of maintenance checks to make sure that we're good to go. So basic things like making sure the tires are at the correct pressure, make sure there's no damage, all those sorts of things. So what we're going to do is early on next week, probably Monday, Tuesday, depending on the weather, we're actually going to go and prepare the entire trailer ready to go, hook the trailer up to the truck and take it on a little test drive, just a few miles or whatever um, around the, the nearby area, just to make sure that everything's okay. Yeah. We may even need to adjust the hitch because we'll have changed the weight and the weight balance of the trailer quite a lot. So all those things we can suss out on that test drive, make sure the tires are fine and, and everything else. The idea being that we can put it back at the RV park for just another couple of days before then next Thursday, we turn up, pick the trailer up and set out on that 2700 mile drive. Uh, we're planning to do this in about five days. We're gonna try and move pretty quickly. Uh, we're used to long driving days, so we're not too concerned. They're not the most fun, but we, we feel very comfortable doing driving days of that distance. So that's all from us. And probably by the time the next video comes out, we will be already on the road. See you next time. That was rubbish. Can I do the clap? Sure. Maybe you should outsource the clapping to a clapper. <laughs> no, no, we're not acquiring any more stuff, Dinah. We can't. <laughs>